Those are absolutely uh, delicious. Uh, this is from the 325. From what I understand, football evaluation days are days where the NCAA allows recruiters to go to top recruits' practices. Of course, Baylor's had some of those things are a part of the penalties that Baylor football will deal with along the way. Yeah, but the that- main core of the ones that could have been, uh, uh, they are not hit with any of those. Yeah, and that'll hurt. I mean, that, that's going to, you know, there's not no punishment involved here. I know it's not the punishment that people wanted to see, but in terms of, like, actually looking at the football program and seeing what the punishments are, they're not, like, killer. They're, they're, they're not nearly as bad as they could have been because the, the no bowl game would have been bad. Although, even if they had dropped that at this point, like, so what? Because, I mean, what's, what's somebody going to transfer on August 11th and go somewhere and play in three weeks? No, they're not. So, the bowl thing, I mean, that's just good news for Baylor fans who think this team could maybe go to a bowl game this year. I'm, I'm predicting they will. So, uh, that's on the table. So, that's a good thing. But as far as, like, the evaluations, I mean, that'll hurt a bit. But... It's also a very thorough recruiting staff. I'm sure they'll find ways to, to still get what they need to get. Uh, but, yeah, you, t- you take a loss of some evaluation time or a lack of, you know, certain times for visitors, you know, the three-week suspension that they have for visits or whatever it was. I mean, you'll take that all day over the alternative of two scholarship losses or five or ten or whatever it might have been and a bowl ban and, a, you know, whatever else could have occurred, yeah, you're absolutely breathing a sigh of relief if you're Dave Aranda. Well, and look, given the fact that we just came off of a year where none of that was going on, even if you even right. if it was legally, I mean, like you just nothing was happening. There were no visits. I would think that they could navigate around that a little bit more because they know what they're doing. So, yeah, I don't – I mean, like this was – again, this was on a scale of 1 to 10. It was about a 2. I mean, and, 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 and a 2 because of that – that uh, re- you know those recruiting things uh if those aren't in there honestly if the recruiting things aren't in there which i believe that's probably the punishment that comes out of the Bay- baylor bruin thing where they had an uh a mostly female uh group that was charged with um you know it's campus tours and things like that but were used in recruiting and instructed what kind of clothes to wear and all that uh, that is now you know under a, like Title IX, and it's a violation of NCAA rules. So I think most of that came out of that punishment, and then the rest of it was was again this this player cheating on a quiz. All right, two five four three three nine eleven twenty two calls coming in. Also the five one two. It took balls to hire a guy for a high school coaching position who had previously enabled a culture of sexual assault. That's not balls. That's enabling. Thanks for the text. Appreciate your time. Yeah, and, one, two. and I think where I was coming from in, in my disagreement just with the way you stated that was like, when I think of balls, I think running into a burning house saving a child takes balls. Like, that, that's, that's how I take that. So, to me, what that guy did, yeah, wasn't showing balls. I mean, it was showing, I don't know what the proper word is, is it was showing some strength, I suppose, to not cave in, and that was your overall point more so than anything else. But, like, yeah, it's not admirable per se that he didn't cave in given the circumstances and what he was refusing to cave over because people who had legitimate gripes had legitimate gripes over the hiring of Art Bryles. But I think, ultimately, I'm sure there was a personal relationship there, but that guy also saw, I can hire this guy, and he's going to win a bunch of games and bring a bunch of attention. Sure. You know, well, so... The, um, the attention part of it, yeah. I mean, most people who hire coaches, you think hire them because they're going to win games. Uh, the attention, of course, comes with more, uh, a right. few the, of them, rather than, than a hire that happens. There's 220 of them a year. Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get stuck on, on him. No, we but, don't. We can move yeah, on no, no, I want to move on. I'm just saying that, like... You could have hired anybody, and you hired him for a very specific reason, and it was to win football games. And I know that's why you hire all coaches, but you did that despite that. So I know what you're trying to say, um, and, yeah, it's not it's not uh, trumping him up, so to speak. All right, let's go to the calls. Okay, three calls and then a break. Jay in San Antonio, you're on the BetUS caller line. Thanks for your call. Yes, sir. Am I on? Yes, yes, yes you are. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to say I, 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 I think that today's report shows that this was a campus-wide issue and nothing to do with Art Bryles. So it really concerns me that as a group that we're saying that Art Bryles did something wrong when he was being given this situation and he tried to address it. He didn't address it necessarily the right way. But to say he deserved to be fired, I think is wrong. He is not only... Uh, elevated Baylor 
and you know, with football, but he's also been a good character. So I really am concerned that this that y'all are saying that he's like this this bad character that deserved to be fired. Uh, Jay, he's been wonderful for the university. Jay, okay, Jay, hold on. You need to listen to us. Yeah. You appreciate your call. Please listen to what we actually said. Look, at, Jay, I have said for the five and a half years that this has been going on that absolutely Art Bryles should get another chance to prove himself because I believe that's America, that you should be able to do that. I think that's the world. People deserve that if they – you know, deserve one. I think he deserves one. Now, what I will say is he had a total lack of leadership in this situation. The NCAA report highlights that and, and saying direct conversations and direct things they had testimony from him is that he did not do enough. He did not react in the proper way when these things were going on underneath his watch. He was the leader of that program. Yes, he brought a lot of notoriety to Baylor, and I don't think Art Bryles is an evil man, but his blind eye that he turned to this is why he he deserved to be fired that's why he deserved to be fired not because he's some sort of bad nefarious human being but because in his role as the leader of the football program he failed in the off the field management completely failed there and that's why he deserved to be fired and uh, i mean that there's there's no there's no real equivocation on that from anyone. I mean, everyone pretty much believes he deserved to be fired. Does he deserve another opportunity? I would That's say for other everyone. People. I, mean, well, I mean, I, I would say there yeah. are a lot of people that feel like he should have been fired. Some that feel like he should have been fired, but an opportunity to come back. And now that might be possible. I don't know. And there's some that feel like he should not have been fired. That Baylor's Board of Regents that set all this up when they themselves knew about the culture on campus. Think about a lot of, I know that the, the victims have to be given a lot of attention here and still do and they are and some of them are in lawsuits and some of them have been through those but uh, think about how many lives were affected i understand victims but many others who have been attached to this who have had their integrity questioned and crushed think about where sean oakman is he lost an nfl career because i understand he was a part of a rape trial he was found not guilty he lost his nfl career I'm not condoning any of that. I'm just saying that there are ways that people can look at this as if Bart Brown should have been fired. That's an argument that will go on forever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to say to that, uh, yeah, uh, they don't owe him anything, though. Like, I mean, just because he was a good football coach for a few years doesn't mean that they, like, owe him now six years later after all of this mess that he did have a hand in, not entirely by himself, but he did have some role in. He did. Uh, and the university did ultimately as well. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even want to make it about him, but uh, I, I know some people will. But, I mean, it, it, let's just uh, hear what everybody else has to say. Yeah. T-Rex, thanks for holding. You're on the Bet U.S. caller line. Thanks for your call. Hey, guys. Your favorite, maybe your least favorite dinosaur. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Today, for some, is a terrible day. And for many others, it's a great day. Regardless of where you stand on this matter, regardless if you're a Baylor-connected person or just somebody who read an article from ESPN back five years ago, we all have opinions, just like we had opinions on Penn State, et cetera, right? It's done from an NCAA standpoint, unless somehow we screw up in the next four years under probation, right? But this issue, pretty much it's wrapped up. There's lawsuits out there. There's the Texas Education Board or whatever it is that, you know, investigation, Texas Rangers, all the individual lawsuits from the Jane Doe's, et cetera. Those got to play out in court. Those don't affect the football team as far as I understand. That's a Baylor issue. But if we're talking strictly sports and how it impacts the team, it was six years too long, but, hey, it's finally freaking over. Okay? I feel for all the victims, and, and I've said this for five years, Whoever is, you know, at fault needs to be crucified and hung out to dry, and I'll be the first person to put a nail through them on the cross. But we don't know specifically what happened or what didn't happen, but the NCAA did their job. As much as I hate the NCAA and how long it took, they made it very clear, just like at UNC and other places, that they can only rule in athletics, and that's what people just need to accept. Unfortunately, they won't because they want Baylor to burn for whatever reason. But it's over, and we all need to just take a step back, read the report, and understand, put our biases to the side, and just understand that 
it's done. And we got to, you know, whether you like the punishments or not, I think the punishments are just like you fall like a two. Hell, they may even be a one on the scale. But they are what they are. I'm happy with them because I'm a Baylor fan. Um, I really feel for all the victims, hope that they find the closure that they need and that whoever is at fault, you know, if you were the person who did something to them, that you get brought to justice at the end of the day. But, hey, we got a football team that's still going to be playing on September 4th. And if you're a Baylor fan, you can be upset about it. You can be happy about it. But the one thing that we can all be united on is that there's football on September 4th. Let's get going. We didn't lose a bowl game. We may lose a couple wins in 2011. whoop de doo Who cares? We still won the Big 12 in 13 and 14. And we're going to go win the Big 12 in 2021. Sikkim Bears, I love you all. Appreciate the coverage. Hang in there, Baylor fans, because we have got through this one. We can get to a lot more. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Uh, they are resilient. No question about it in ways that sometimes you wonder, but they are very resilient. All right, one more and then the break. Yeah. Uh, Alex in Oklahoma, thanks for your call. You're on the BetUS caller line. Hey, so I am actually very, like being a Sumer fan, I'm very, like, agreeing with the penalty that Baylor got. Oh. Lost you? Well, I think we lost. Did we lose the connection, Armstrong? I still got it here. Okay. All right. You want to come back with him? Or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, in fact, you're trying, if you, I don't know if you'll be able to hear us or not, but if you were on, we lost the, the connection for some reason. We're going to take a break here. We have a break, uh, and we have Ari Wasserman of TheAthletic.com. He's a national college football writer. I had originally scheduled him to talk about uh, the national picture of college football, Ohio State, the Big Ten, and much more with realignment still in the picture. But obviously today with the news of Baylor and the NCAA, we'll ask him about that as well. Uh, David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke, and this is Sikkim 365 Radio. Ideal MRI, 